What is up guys this is Fito back with another video on the MPK20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM. This is the January 12th 2021 build and as you can see this is of course based on Android 11 as you are noticing and here the Evolution X version is 5.3 lightning official it says. The security patch is latest of January 5th 2021. You can see the baseband and the kernel version from here. Maintainer is still Joe Huab of course. But first, let me talk about my flashing experience over here. Let me tell you what I did. If you haven't followed the Telegram group, which is our like KTN Tech Telegram group, you can join it from the description box below. Do not worry. And here I have posted like yesterday that what I have went through after flashing this Evolution X. So for the first time when I flashed the Evolution X, I came from the Fluid OS. Of course, if you have not seen the Fluid OS video card right there. But before that, I think the problem has started when I flashed the MIUI 12.5, which is based on Android 11. That is official sources for the like MIUI 12 and that is based on official Android 11. So afterwards, I flashed this OSS vendor based fluid OS. That is again Android 11 OSS vendor. So that went fine from MIUI to OSS vendor. But from OSS vendor, when I moved to this MIUI vendor based Android 10 MIUI vendor based actually, and then I flashed the Evolution X 5.3, I think then the problem has started. And when I opened the front camera after flashing Evolution X, I saw the front camera is showing black. And then I posted it on the Evolution XS group and they said or they suggested me to check the sensors. Then I see all the sensors are broken. I checked it with CPU Z and then I checked it with the IDA64 app. Then I saw all the sensors are totally broken. They are not working. So afterwards, when I saw all the sensors are broken, I checked even the DRM info. It like had become L3. But right now, as you can see, it's back on L1. I'll show you or I'll explain what I have done over here to make it L1. So afterwards, when I saw L3 and stuff, then the sensors are broken. I was really worried that what I need to do. And I had seen comments like this of you guys that sensors are breaking if you flash OSS vendor, like if you're coming from OSS vendor ROM to a MIUI vendor based ROM. But I did not quite get the point to reply to that because I never faced it. So I did not know what to say. So afterwards, I flashed the Corvus 12.5. I think that is based on OSS vendor. That is why after flashing Corvus 12.5, the sensors were back and the DRM info was showing L1. But then I thought that like that is just a bug or something for the Evolution X. So I flashed a previous build like Evolution X 5.2 version, not the 5.3 version. I flashed the 5.2 version to check if the sensors are broken in that too. So there I flashed the Evolution X 5.2. I clean flashed it. Then I saw, yes, the sensors are broken again and DRM info shows L3 again. So I was really worried that what should I do? So later I fast boot flashed the MIUI 12.0.4 ROM, which is the official MIUI 12. And with fast boot, of course, I flashed it. And that MIUI is based on Android 10, of course. When that official MIUI booted into the system, I saw like in the setup, in the beginning of the setup, it showed camera error and I felt a little bit of vibration on the phone. And then I felt like it is happening on the front camera right here. So yes, it was vibrating on the front camera itself inside. So it was not coming out, but it was vibrating right here. So I was again worried and there I completed the setup. I tried to see if the front camera works there, but it did not. It like popped out the front camera, then it went down. And when I tried to calibrate the front camera and it showed me a pop-up that I should calibrate in MIUI, of course. And then when I calibrate it, it did not work. It said calibration failed. And then later I thought I will flash the old MIUI version, which is like MIUI 10350 that is based on Android 9. Then I flashed it with like fast boot method, of course. And after that, I saw the sensors are back and the DM info has become L1 again in Android 9 based me Y. So then I OT updated it to 12.0.4. Then everything is working fine. And in 12.0.4 later, when I updated it, then the sensors were back and the DRM info was again showing as L1. But there was one problem that I saw that the find device was broken. It was showing find device is corrupted or something. Find device storage is corrupted. And yes, you can fix that. I found a really good video. I'll link it below. If your find device shows corrupted storage or something, 
you can like fix that with that video i'll link it below i found a really good one and you can follow that if you want to fix the find device problem i guess but other than that this is how i fixed it so i went back to the miui 9 base 10.3.5.0 with fastboot method then i ot updated it to 12.0.4 then i flashed orange fox recovery and then i flashed this evolution x again right now if i open cpu z and go to the sensors and as you can see all the sensors are working fine no issues with that and the DRI info again is showing L1. And here, let me show you the safety net kind of breaks here. So again, safety net fails and I have tested it even on me why it failed. So I do not know why. It depends on Google or something, I guess, the latest Google services or something, the Google Play services. And I think the CTS profile match simply fails, but I have set up banking apps like Google Pay over here, and that is working fine. Banking apps are totally working fine here. But only that like in safety net test app, it shows that it fails. But otherwise in banking apps, it does work fine. At least in India with Google Pay and even with this SBI card app and stuff, this works flawlessly. No issues with uh, banking apps here. It is working fine. And the sensors breaking stuff is happening because I moved from OSS vendor to MIUI vendor, I guess. So it was not happening earlier. I never faced this kind of issue while moving from OSS vendor to MIUI vendor. And I have moved from OSS vendor to MIUI vendor multiple times. Like at least I can say I moved at least 20 times from OSS vendor to MIUI vendor. This is the first time I'm facing this. I do not know why it happened or why it's happening. But yes, this is the first time I have faced this issue. So I would say if you are flashing OSS vendor ROMs, be aware of this problem and backup your persist in Orange Fox recovery. You can go to backup and then select persist and make a backup and you can restore it later if you lose your sensors. So yeah, that is one fix for you guys. Now let me show you the normal stuff here like the camera again and here with the stock camera, I just took some pictures. Let me show you again the front camera and the back camera both are working fine. Let me show you live over here. As you can see, the front camera is working as you were noticing and yes, you can switch between lenses. But yes, of course, the portrait mode is broken because this is of course based on like the version 185 ANX camera. So this about the ANX team, ANX camera is actually working even with 4K video you can shoot and there is 960 FPS slow-mo option too. That works fine. And I would say, yes, the ANX camera is almost working fine except portrait mode or the 48 megapixel mode. Now talking about the stock launcher, yes, this is still the pixel launcher if you are noticing here as you can see and you can disable the suggestions from here, I guess, as you can see, I can disable it. And here is how the app drawer comes up. You can just swipe it down from the bottom and the app drawer comes up. Swiping down here gets you to the quick settings panel as you can see. And we do have the widgets working super fine. To the left of the home screen, we do have this Google's Discover page. Now talking about the quick settings panel, this is how it looks like. We have multiple toggles. You can add even more of them from here, of course. And I have added a couple of them like the oxygen screen recorder and stuff. And if I go into the settings, as you can see, you can change the resolution, the bit rate and the number of frames and stuff. And then we have also the normal Android 11 screen recorder. With that, you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time. So that is great. And here, let me actually show you, we have also the FPS counter. So this works fine too. As you can see, it shows up the FPS on the top left. And talking about Evolution X, this is a very stable experience. And here, let me go into the sound settings first. And here we have the Mi Audio Direct 2. And you can change between these many options. The sound output via the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well is great. No issues. And there is the volume panel. This is how it looks. As you can see, let me go back. And here, let me go into the customization section. This is how it looks like. And of course, we have the about section up top. In the themes, we have the dark theme, clock style, accent color picker. This is the like, you can pick any kind of colors, of course. And then there is the preset of the accent colors, plethora of accent colors here. No issues with that headline and body fonts. You can change status bar icon style. You can change that too. And you can also change the volume panel right now. So that is cool. By default, this looks like this AOSP kind of look. Then you can change it to compact, audio tiled and stuff like that. And we have the custom header option too. Then we have the quick setting tile styles and you can change the style over here. And there is the quick setting tile disco and that is the reason why as you can see, if I enable something like the hotspot and stuff and night light too, auto rotate and torch, this is how it like works. So yeah, looks kind of, I would say good enough in my opinion. 
let me go back we have the tint quick setting tile using accent color and stuff and background opacity you can change even the opacity of the quick settings panel if you want to let me go back we have the status bar option here we have the clock and date okay so i went to the battery bar here is the clock and date customization battery bar and the status bar battery indicator and stuff you can change and there is a traffic indicators icon manager of course you can have a headset bluetooth etc and 4g icon and the view wi-fi vaulty roaming indicator etc options are there then we have the notifications you can disable heads up and the notification headers and stuff you can disable that too and we have this like screen edge lighting and stuff then you can change the custom color and then vibrate on connect call waiting etc you can change from here so that's it let me go back to the quick settings panel here we have the battery percentage and you can choose it to next to the icon and stuff for the quick settings panel then we have edit icon and the brightness slider position and stuff you can change then column and row number customization is there then we have the power menu customization here advanced reboot is enabled by default and inside AOSP you can change some stuff and this is how the power menu looks like we have this google home controls over here and if you tap as advanced of course you can directly boot into recovery or fast boot from here let me go back and here let me show you the gestures we have the screen off gesture double tap to sleep of course the status bar double tap to sleep that is working fine but let me show you there is this double tap to sleep on lock screen and status bar let me show you here if i double tap in the lock screen this double tap is not working right now i do not know why this is happening but yes this is not working now let me quickly show you the fingerprint scanner speed here from the always on display as you can see unlocked fine let me show you with my left hand thumb from the always on display unlocked fine now from the lock screen again unlocked fine okay so it is working super fine no issues as you just saw the fingerprint scanner speed is great then we have brightness control this is this brightness control you can slide a finger on the status bar and it will adjust the brightness of the screen very cool feature in my opinion it works flawlessly no issues with that we have the screen of pop button toggle torch and the AOSP settings we have and from here you can go into the system navigation gestures you have all of the customizations like the haptic feedback back gesture animation just a bar length you can customize this bar's length and we have this advanced gestures too so extended swipe action you can customize then show pill bar or totally hide it then left edge right edge and amount of screen height used to touch the back gesture and stuff you can choose those there is also two and three button navigation of course then we have the swipe to take screenshot and this works fine as you can see you can share edit or delete them from here and we have the switch screen off skip music track and stuff like that that is working fine quickly open camera 2 is there let me show you now the lock screen here is how it looks like we have the screen of fingerprint scanner and these are the fingerprint icons which are present here it's totally same it was there earlier too and even on the like animation section this is this same same from the previous build these animations look really really cool i have been using the cyberpunk 2077 of course and if you scroll down we have the charging animation and stuff by the way talking about charging 18 watt fast charging is working fine then inside navigation we have the navigation gestures again now inside hardware buttons we have the click to direct partial screenshot and stuff then inside animation we have the crt scale you can change it to default to if you want to then we have the quick setting animations and you can change the animation style and stuff from here then if you go into the misc settings we have the launch music app on headset connect gaming mode is there and there is the charging animation then we have this usb configuration i have changed it to file transfer for my convenience and we have the radio info and stuff then force brightness values you can change the brightness values if you want to so that's it for the customization now inside battery settings this is how it looks like and we have the battery temperature on the bottom then the screen on time and the last full charge and there is the battery saver adaptive battery and stuff and you can see the full battery usage from here and i would say the battery life would be good it's like about seven hours of screen on time that you will get pretty much so no issues with the battery life even the battery idle drain is quite good and again 18 watt fast charging is flawlessly working in the display settings we have the brightness level customization dark theme customization and in dark theme you can change it to like something like raven black or something i have did that that is working fine and you can change the night light settings too and inside live display we have the color calibration the whole screen rgb you can control then hue saturation intensity contrast you can control too reading mode is there turns the display totally black and white and we have the styles and wallpapers and from here as you can see there are the wallpapers and from here you get plethora of options for the wallpapers you also get this like live wallpapers too i guess 
so as you can see you can download them and use them so yes lot of live wallpapers are there you can download them and we have the display size and stuff then inside lock screen we have the double tap to check phone and stuff then always show time and info ambient wake gesture is there and there is a double tap to wake as you can see there is pocket detection too you can enable and enable blurs is enabled by default and anti flicker or dc dimming mode is there you can enable that too so let me show you with i think double tap to wake was not enabled so even with that as you can see the double tap to sleep on the lock screen for some reason is not working i do not know why but double tap to sleep on the status bar of course even from the lock screen should be working fine yes inside security there is nothing much like there is only the fingerprint scanner option no app lock or no face unlock as of right now over here now let me open couple of apps and show you guys the app minimum speeds and the ram management here let's open facebook twitter play store instagram google home now what else let's open flipkart now let's open this drm info app now let's open all these apps from memory again okay so did i open youtube i don't remember twitter is in memory play store is in memory instagram is still in memory google home is in memory chrome is in memory so i would say yes all the apps do stay in memory no issues with that and the memory management is great here no issues and the in terms of the performance i would say the performance is great i have not been seeing any kind of huge lags or something here the performance is very smooth and if you want to see the benchmarks here are the Android and geek build score for this particular rom or this particular build so thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you found this video helpful and please share this video out with your friends to inform them about the issues of the oss vendor to me why vendor kind of stuff which i talked about so in terms of the like flashing roms i would say stay away from the oss vendor roms for a couple of days until the developers fix that issue of the breaking sensors i think that is something to be like still yet to be fixed with the android 11 based oss vendor kind of stuff this never happened to me this is the first time which happened and my experience was totally worth it so that i could share it with you guys so please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kdn tech signing off i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now